thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary, for, um, you know, we've, we've discussed this issue and offshore drilling many times here, and I appreciate your willingness to come and, and commensurate with us on this. Would you agree, sir, that the, the technical expertise with hydrofracking mainly lies with the industry itself, that is, those who are doing this day after day, the engineers, people who have been doing this for even 60 years. Would you agree, sir, that the main knowledge base exists with this group today, as opposed to federal agencies and, you know, people who are not in this business? I, w I would say that uh, industry has a tremendous, tremendous uh, expertise on fracking, and it obviously has been going on for a very long time. I would also say that the huge uh, change in what we are now predicting to be the natural gas resource of the United States that gives us a 100-year supply was brought about, frankly, by the scientists at the United States Geological Survey and the Department of er Energy working closely with industry. And so there is expertise in both uh, government as well as in industry on uh, the issue of hydraulic fracking. Right. And, and I think you've really answered my question even more, and we agree even more than perhaps uh, I would have suspected, and that is this has been a very collaborative effort. That is to say that scientists, both in the pure science community and also in the industry itself, have come together. And I agree with you, sir. I think that the natural gas future is very bright for the United States. So here's my question. The main players, ExxonMobil, Chesapeake, and others, uh, to what extent, before these rules were uh, brought out, and I know they're not finalized, but they are preliminary, uh, before doing that, to what extent have you had input from uh, the industry? We've had, uh, Congressman Fleming, uh, very significant input, including, uh, I think it's been more than a year ago, where I invited all of those companies to come to have a discussion on uh, hydraulic fracking at the Department of Interior. There's been major outreach by the Bureau of Land Management uh, to all of these companies, and uh, that will continue to be the case as we move forward with the formal rulemaking yeah. process. Uh, sir, can you point to any measures in your proposed regulations that you adopted from their recommendations? I uh, remember well the, uh, one of the panels a year ago at the Department of Interior by industry representatives where uh, they were of the belief that uh, it was appropriate to have disclosure of what was being injected into the underground. Uh, certainly that was one of the considerations that uh, took place with respect to one of the cornerstones of this new rule. Uh, okay, thank you. The, um, in, in reading through these rules, one thing that's really coming out I think very clearly is there's a lot of pre-disclosures, water sources, the formulation of the fluids, uh, the engineering, and so forth. But the problem is the folks who do this day to day tell me that every day is a new day. They have to formulate, reformulate every day, even water sources. They have to do a lot of things on the fly. And the other thing that businessmen tell me, uh, and women, uh, even in other industries, tell me that the biggest impediment to hiring jobs and improving the economy is the fact that regulations restrict them in their day-to-day decision-making. So what I'm seeing here, sir, is a lot of new regulations that handcuffs those who are on the front line doing this. It'll take longer, be more expensive, and be more restrictive. It'll be less ability to make moment-to-moment -moment decisions. So I'd love to hear, hear your comments on that. Congressman Fleming, uh, our view is that uh, natural gas and hydraulic fracking are very appropriate for the United States of America, but we need to make sure that we provide confidence to the American people that uh, public health and safety and the environment are being protected. And the measures that we have put in place, uh, in my view, Congressman Fleming, are uh, very appropriate uh, common sense uh, measures. If I had the time and we weren't restricted here, I would tell you the story of a uh, Mack trailer, which uh, now is employing 900 people in Ohio, where I was yesterday. And uh, the man is also a farmer who uh, started the company in his garage. He's very supportive of moving forward uh, with these common sense rules because of the fact that uh, he believes that it's essential to the natural gas future yes. and his company. Since I'm running out of time, let me ask one more quick question. What has happened recently, or even the last few years, 
that we have to now rush to come out with all of these federal rules that we never had before? What, what is the sentinel event that's caused this? But the fact of the matter is uh, we are doing a tremendous amount of hydraulic fracking, over 90 percent, maybe 99 percent of all the wells on public lands are using hydraulic fracking. And it's part of what's caused this natural gas revolution and great potential for America. And we need to make sure that we're doing it right uh, so that we can uh, capture the future uh, American energy, domestic grown energy that will power our economy. Thank you.